Hi, everyone. You can see me, I'm Erica. I can't hear you, but that's okay. I see some of your faces. So this is our aligned vinyasa. And if you have blocks, it's a great idea to have blocks. But if you don't, I just want to say in advance, sometimes a thick book or something like that will also work if you don't have specific yoga blocks. But um, let's actually start sitting. And if you'd like, you can sit on one of your blocks. And just nice and tall. And just let your shoulders relax. Really let your body be at ease for a moment. You can close your eyes. And just notice your breath. to deepen your breath a bit where you are paying attention to the length of your inhalations and exhalations. So you want to start cultivating samabhikti, which means equal parts. So it's equal parts breath. Your inhalation is on about the count of four. And your exhalation is same length of time about the count of four. As you are focusing on the breath, you start to notice your seat, right? So your sitting bones right underneath your pelvis, just picture them rooting down to the earth. Right? So kind of like the roots of a tree or a plant. And you can think of your spine somewhat like a stem. So it begins to really grow upward, right? So you're rooting down, but the stem is reaching up, flowering up with the crown of the head. You start to have just a little bit more intention of how you're sitting. And we're just going to take right arm out to the side for a moment. And then exhale as you bring your right forearm to your middle back. So it's basically a half bind, so even though we're sitting, feel free to open your eyes here if you need. Um, if you are tight in the shoulder, the tendency is going to be for the elbow to poke out to the side. Just do your best, though. You might not be tight to hug the right arm on the best you can. So take a breath in. On the next exhale, as you tilt your head to the left. And so we're going to get a nice stretch in the right side of your neck. And perhaps your deltoids, part of your shoulder as well. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. And stay for your breath out. And then we'll just release the head back to center. And then you can drop your right arm down. Just take a moment, full breath in, and full breath out. Now inhale, left arm out to the side. Now you can take that wrap around on this side. Right, so left forearm, just coming to the middle back. Now again, try to release your left shoulder. So we do hold a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders. So some people may even have a tendency to sort of um, hunch up the shoulder. So just be aware, you know, see if you can let it drop down. And then this time we're going to tilt the head to the right. So to feel the sensation in that left side of your neck. Nice deep breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Maybe you relax that left shoulder even slightly more as you breathe out. So just inhale, head back to center. We'll release the left arm. So just take a moment. Let's inhale both arms up. And then exhale as you bring the hands to the heart center. Feel free to make the sounds of bone. You can also set an intention. And 
hips and inhale, both arms out to the side. So a couple more little things here as we're sitting. Exhale, take your uh, side bend to the right. Yes, we're just really reaching through the left arm. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. Maybe stretch a little deeper as you exhale. One more breath in. I see the quality of breath as you breathe out. We'll inhale both arms up and again, reaching nice and long. And then exhale as you go to the other side. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. Really taking your time with the breath. And exhale. One more breath in. And stay for the breath out. Inhale, both arms. Then exhale, find your way onto all fours so you can remove your block. And then just get a nice connection with your hands and the floor. Knees are right underneath your hips. And then we'll just take a few cat cows. Inhale to cow. Take a nice deep breath in. For the next exhale, slow exhale, right? So we are working with pranayama, which means breath control. So you're inhaling with control, not rushing the air in, but trying to make it smooth. Right? So very voluntary exhale round the back. And just take a few more on your own if you want to go a little faster or make circles. Some people like to start adding side bends into their cat cow, right? That's up to you. And just noting that the breath is one of the, um, you know, bodily functions that are both voluntary and involuntary, right? So of course, we're not thinking about breathing, we're still breathing. But we can also be very intentional about it, right? And, and breathe in, in a voluntary way. So you're really being mindful of your even exhalations and exhalations. So I'm also gonna start to, Transcend this into Ujjayi breathing. So it's still going to be Samabhuti, meaning equal parts breath. That doesn't change, but it is a little bit more of an exhale in terms of, I should say, an audible exhale. So the next time you exhale, you can make your way back into just a neutral spine right in the middle. And then we'll tuck the toes through bent knees. You may sit up, down, right? So sitting on the ceiling is oftentimes a nice, um, Interesting to, to picture. And then we'll just bend one knee, and the opposite, heel to the floor, pedaling out through the feet. And then we're going to inhale, roll out to plank pose. So if you can keep your knees lifted away from the floor, great. But if you need to drop the knees a bit, that's okay. Take a modified plank. Notice the thighs are still on a diagonal. It's not like we're in a tabletop, right? So it is a modified plank. One more breath in. Whether your knees are lifted or not, one more breath out. Inhale. Exhale, knees wide, big toes touch, child pose. And take a full breath in. And full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Now remember, you can take this pose whenever you like. One more breath in. If your body needs a rest, child pose is always available. Breathe out. And we'll tuck the toes once more. Send the hips up, Adho Mukha Shanasana, your downward facing dog. And as we're here, we're just going to inhale right leg high, as high as you can go, and make any movements with your right leg you might like. Maybe bend the knee, open the hip, close the hip. Just anything that feels good, there is no wrong or right. And then we're just going to inhale, straighten the right leg, if it's not already. And then exhale, just bring the right foot outside of your right hand. So we're going to drop the left knee to the floor. Just lift up for a moment, almost like an upward facing dog shape in your chest. Avoid the shoulders kind of creeping up to the ears. Move those shoulders down. Let's blossom in the heart center. 
And some of you might like your block under your left hand. Not necessary. Some people like that little extra lift. And then we're going to inhale right arm up to the ceiling. And then we're going to exhale, add on another half five. So right arm, again, it's really hugging onto the right rib cage. And then something we often don't do in yoga, a lot of times we're, we're trying to have very clean lines um, in certain poses, but allow your head to tilt to the left. So the purpose is just stretch out the right side of the neck. Doing things like this, very good if you hold tension in your traps. A lot of us do in the neck, we hold a lot of stress there. Some of us tend to hunch up the shoulders. This is a great way to counter that. One more good breath in. Stay for your breath out. We're going to inhale right arm up. You can restrain your head. Have more of that Tadasana alignment, crown of head to tailbone. And then exhale, just bring the right hand. So again, feel free to use blocks or not. Tuck your left side of toes. I'm just going to lengthen and fold inside of your right leg. And again, come back to your ujjayi breath, inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the nose. Inhale, making it very audible. And exhale. One more breath in. And stay for your breath out. Let's inhale, bend the right knee. Now we're just going to externally rotate the back leg. So bring your left heel down. And then we're gonna just come up to a nice warrior one. Nice lunge in your right leg. Now it's still early, so you might be a little, you know, tight in your left hip. Do your best to square the hips forward, right? So what can happen, a lot of times the hips like to face the diagonal, that sometimes it is about widening your stance. So if your left foot is all the way over here, pretty much impossible to square your hips, right? So you want to give, it's really heel to sitting bone alignment. If you could draw a line, your heels correspond with both sitting bones. One more breath in. Maybe you lunge a little deeper. Breathe out. Let's just inhale straight in the right leg. And then exhale. Bring the arms down, but guys, we're going to bring right arm first to the middle back, just like a half five. And then see if you can grab the left elbow with your, or excuse me, right elbow with your left hand. Now, if you're not quite catching the elbows, it's okay if it's the uh, forearms. Just take a full breath in. A full breath out. Inhale. Now we're going to exhale, bend the right knee. This is like a variation on devotional warrior or humble warrior. So oftentimes we'll clasp the hands, but just a different variation here. Try to keep the elbows. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Really breathing nicely through both feet. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. So just release the left hand down, followed by the right. And then take your time as you make your way back to a downward facing dog. Now, again, if you're new to vinyasa, down dog can sometimes be very intense. So, you know, just know child's pose is available. Right, so let's inhale plank pose. And we'll stay here for the exhale. Breathe in. We're gonna exhale, drop only the knees, only the chest and shin. Some call this inchworm. It's also known as eight point pose. So your sitting bones are quite high in the air. Point your feet, inhale baby cobra, rolling those shoulders back. And then we're just going to exhale through all fours, downward facing dog. Take a moment, full breath in, full breath out. Inhaling, and that's it. And this time we're going to inhale left leg high. And then exhale again, move that leg around, however you see fit, whatever feels good. Seeing what different movements will do to different 
muscles in your head. And then eventually inhale, straighten your left leg. And we're gonna exhale, left foot, outside left hand. Now drop your right knee for a moment. Lift onto the fingertips or you can even use your blocks. And really focus on spreading those collarbones. You're blossoming your heart forward and upward. Right, and lift the earlobes away from the shoulders. And we'll let the right hand go flat. Inhale, left, arm up. And then we're gonna exhale, take the half bind on this side. Right, so again, friendly reminder, if you see what my left elbow is doing, this is not as far as I can go. I really want to wedge that left arm on. So do the best you can with that. And then let your um, right ear just kind of fall onto the right shoulder. Nice deep breaths. And if you know you're tightening your shoulders and your neck, this could be a nice thing just to do throughout the day. And even if you're not doing a whole class, just this type of movement in the neck, stretch in the neck, if you really take the time to breathe, you really start to alleviate a lot of stress and tension there. We'll inhale, left arm up, release the head, and then we'll exhale, left hand down. So both hands are inside the left foot. Let's tuck the right set of toes underneath, lengthen and fold inside. So this is a nice wide Parsco Tenasana. Square your hips, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. We'll inhale, bend the left knee. Now, you do want to externally rotate that back leg. So you're bringing the right heel down. Try your best to keep the front body facing forward as you inhale, arms up, your jaws to the floor. Now, you know, traditionally, in a lot of um, types of hot yoga, palms are touching. That can be a lot for people's shoulders. You can also just kind of let the arms be parallel with each other. If you have tight shoulders, though, since it's kind of the theme we've done today, it's okay to. Uh, have a wide V in the arms or even cactus, right? So kind of goes hand in hand. If you're someone who's tight in the traps, it very well may be the case that bringing the hands closer together is not feeling so great in your neck. Okay, maybe one day, if you need the modification, take it, full breath in. Try to keep squaring your hips, breathe out. Now this time we're gonna drop left forearm first, right? So we need to be clear about the overlapping of the forearms changing they're not symmetrical poses there. We'll take a breath in. Let's straighten the left leg for a moment and just square the hips. We'll breathe in. Now exhale, we bend the left knee. Variation on humble warrior. Really actively root through both feet. Full breath in. Get your head and the last full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. We'll inhale both hands down. And then again, just exhale, make your way back. Adhanuka Svanasana. Full breath in. Okay, if some of you need to bend your knees a little bit. Full breath out. And we're gonna inhale plank pose. So incorporate your abdominals here. Really look forward, stay for the exhale. Breathe in, nice strong arms. Exhale, drop just knees, just chest and chin. Point your feet, inhale baby cobra. Roll those shoulders back. And then we're gonna exhale through all fours. So that is a variation on a vinyasa. We don't always go over it. Some people prefer that instead of a chaturanga dandasana, if you know what chaturangas are. There's just different ways you can do a vinyasa, but you know, kind of incorporate different poses, substitute the cobra for upper facing dog, that sort of thing. So let's walk our feet forward. And just to the very top of the mat. 
once you get there, stay in your nice forward fold. All 10 toes face forward. Stop in the knees if you have to. Take another breath in. We'll exhale slowly roll your way to stand. We'll inhale arms up high prayer. It's really rooting nicely through the feet. Exhale hands, heart to center. We'll inhale arms down and up, bird bahastasana. And then exhale, lean spine fold forward, uttanasana. Let's inhale right foot behind, low lunge. Exhale, left foot back, down facing dog. We'll inhale, roll it out, plank pose, looking forward. Let's all again exhale, knees, chest, chin, very parallel, upper arms. Yes, you're poking your butt behind the air. Point your feet, inhale, baby cobra. So again, if it's new for you, it might be a very awkward transition. Exhale, down dog. And with practice, becomes a bit more second nature. Inhale, right foot stepping forward. Exhale, left foot to match, top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, three fold. Inhale, arms higher. Remember, you're working with Ujjayi Pranayama. Exhale, hands, heart center. Inhale, arms down and up. Use your exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, left foot behind, low lunge. Exhale, right foot back, down low. Inhale, plank pose. Now, if you want Chaturanga, you can take that. Right, Chaturanga or knees, chest chin. Inhale, upper facing dog or baby cobra. Exhale, lift your hips down facing dog. As you see the difference, you see you have options. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, right foot to match. Inhale, flat back. And then exhale, really fold. Inhale, arms higher, Mahastasana. Exhale, hands are right center. Take a moment to pause, full breath in. We'll exhale, arms along the side of the body, breathe out. Let's inhale, both arms. And then again, we're going to exhale, drop the right forearm first. You see how it's the right forearm hugging the middle back. Then the left. Again, try to grab the elbows if you can. But if that's not accessible, again, do your best. Just do the forearms or even the wrist. As long as you feel some kind of stretching action happening in your upper arms and your uh, shoulders. Take a moment, full breath in. Full breath out. We'll release just the left arm up. Try and exhale right arm up. Take a full breath in, it's cultivating patience here. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Now we're gonna inhale right foot behind, low lunge. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, right foot high. Nice down dog split here. And then we're gonna exhale again, right foot outside of the right hand. So tap the back knee. Let's look to the heart center for a moment. Stay to the exhale. Inhale, right arm up. And then exhale, add that half bind again. Full breath in. And you can even tilt the head a moment, breathe out. One more breath cycle, inhale. And exhale. We'll inhale, right arm up, lift your head. And then exhale, just release the right hand down. This time we're gonna sneak in a little bit of a deeper lizard pose as you either lower the forearms to the floor or to your blocks or books. And if you need to keep your arms straight, that's fine too. Nice lizard pose. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, and exhale. Breathing in. And breathing out. Now send the hands back. If you want to keep them on the blocks, again, that's fine. Tuck your left to the toes. Take this wide variation 
I'm just going to bend the right knee, send the left heel down, you're prepping for warrior one, and then we're going to inhale arms up, warrior one, full breath in, maybe bend the right knee, a little deeper, breathe out, inhale, straighten the right leg, and then a little different this time, we will interlace the fingers, so right thumb, on top of left thumb, try to have that specific major placement. Inhale, draw the knuckles down, lift to the chest. And then exhale, we bend the right knee, humble warrior. Lifting the fist up the best you can. And again, everyone will be different. Creating a nice stretch for the biceps, even the deltoids. Lifting those deltoids, those are the shoulder heads, up and away from the floor. Okay, full breath in, full breath out. Let's inhale, both hands down. And then just wiggle the right foot over to the midline. Right heel lines up with the left arch. Keep bending in right knee. Virabhadrasana, two. Nice warrior two. Looking over the right hand, full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. Inhale, straighten your right leg. You might have to wiggle the left foot up a little, shortening your stance. And just, you know, make it a point to crease your right hip back. So right hip back, triangle pose. Right hand down, left arm up. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Now keep breathing, right? A nice controlled breath. And just, you know, picture your um, upper body leaning back into a wall. It's just regular triangle pose, full breath in. And full breath out. One heel back on up, your Vajrasana, two. Flip your right palm, let's tip it back, peaceful warrior. Still lunging in that right leg, inhale. Exhale. Inhaling. And exhale. Take one more breath in, this thigh work. Exhale, with no hands, back around to the floor, low lunge. So yes, you want to spin the left heel up. Palms face down. Let's come back. Down, face it up. We'll inhale, roll it up, plank pose. Exhale, your choice, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, dandasana. Inhale, baby cobra, or upper facing dog. Exhale, come on back, downward facing dog. We'll inhale, bend both knees, lift your gaze. Exhale, step or hop forward, top of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale. Inhale, arms higher, Vahastasana. Exhale, hands, heart center, full breath in. We'll just exhale, arms down for a moment, find your center, breathe out. Treat Tadasana like you would any other pose, with integrity, with attention. A lot of times in our in-person classes, there's definitely a habit of students using this time to fix the shirt or grab water. It's understandable because it does feel somewhat like a break. At the same time, there's so much information in this pose. Lengthening the tailbone, reaching up through the crown of the head. Now, this time we have left arm out. Again, still cultivating patience, standing in Tadasana. Bring the left forearm to the middle left, the best you can, right? So now it's the left forearm that's up. Inhale, right arm out to the side. Try to grab your elbows or your forearms, full breath in, full breath out, standing nice and tall, inhale, and exhale. Let's inhale, drop the right forearm, you can even lift it up right by the ear, 
Drop the left. Inhale that up by the ear. Full breath in. Exhale. Swan dive forward. Uttanasana. Let's inhale left foot behind the lunge. Exhale right foot back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Full breath in. Remember to root your index knuckles nicely into the mat here. Breathe out. Inhale left leg high. Echo Kata. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Exhale left foot upside left hand. So tap the back knee for a moment. Let's lift in the chest, shoulders away from those ears. And then once again, we're going to inhale left arm up and add the half bind. Yeah, so hugging that left arm onto the rib cage, full breath in. And again, you can add that little head tilt just for that added stretch in the neck. Breathe out. Inhale, and exhale. Let's inhale, left arm up, release the head up, and then exhale, lizard pose. So again, your choice. Your lizard pose might still mean your arms are pretty straight. It might mean lowering forearms all the way, or to blocks. So breathing into this hip opener, inhale through your nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. Two more mindful cycles of breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. We'll inhale his hands back. Make sure hands are inside of the left foot. Left foot is still off to the left. Tuck your right side of toes. Lengthen and fold inside out. Now we're going to externally rotate the right legs. So remember, we're spinning the back foot on like a 45 degree angle. If you don't feel a really good connection with your back foot on the floor, shorten your stance a little. You have a nice solid firm connection with both feet. Bend the left knee. Inhale, arms up. Your Vajrasana one. Nice lunge in that left leg. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, straighten the left leg. And let's uh, interlace fingers behind the back. So this time it will be your left thumb on top. Inhale, lift in the chest. And then exhale, bring bend left knee. Humble warrior. Different side with your mudra as well as the leg. Crown of the head release. Do your best to lift the fist. And again, a little different. So if your fists are just lifting a little, that's okay. Try to lift those shoulder heads away from the floor. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. Maybe go a little deeper. Exhale. Inhale, both hands down. Now take this time to adjust your feet. Warrior one feet and warrior two feet are a different pattern. So left heel lines up pretty much with right arch, more or less. Come on up. Your Vajrasana at two. Right, you might be really feeling it in your left leg. Do your best to breathe through it. Left knee cap really facing forward. One more right hand. One more breath out. Inhale, straighten your left leg. And then again, maybe you um pop the back foot up if that you know feels better. Crease the left to back, inhale forward, exhale, regular triangle pose, right arm up, left arm down. And keep activating through your feet. So there's a lot of different energies happening here. Yes, we're rooting down through the feet. Just known as apana, that downward energy. We're reaching up through the fingertips, prana. Let's inhale back on up. Your bajasa to two. Nice bend in that left knee. Flip your left palm. Take it back. Peaceful warrior. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. 
exhale. One more breath in. Then we'll exhale, windmill hands, back around to the floor, we'll lunge. So again, take that right heel up, all 10 toes face forward now. And then we'll just step back on the gush bounce. We'll inhale, plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga four, knees, chest, chin. Parallel arms go either way. Inhale, upper facing dog or baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll inhale, bend both knees. Exhale, walk, step, or hop forward. Top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, threefold. We'll just inhale, arms up. High prayer. Exhale, hands for center. Take a moment, full breath in. Full breath out. Let's just take a breath in, shifting slightly into the right foot. Different approach to warrior three. You're going to keep the left leg in the same rotation as you hinge everything forward. Right? So you think of geometry, it's like the left side of your body kept the same exact tadasana shape. And you just change the orientation from vertical to horizontal. It's okay if you need to bend your right knee. You're going to keep your focus. Take another breath in. Exhale, hinge back up, use your right foot to dust it up. Full breath in. Find your center, breathe out. Same thing, other side, inhale. Exhale, begin to hinge forward. Your jaws in a three. You might notice one side is more challenging than the other. Actively press through your right heel. Keep breathing. And on your next exhale, hinge back, mat pose. Full breath in. And just exhale, release the arms, well inside the body here, bring it out. We'll bend both knees, inhale, arms up, chair pose. Stay here for the exhale. Breathing in. And exhale as you fold forward, it's an awesome breathing. Let's inhale, bring your right foot behind the lunge. Exhale, left foot back, downward facing dog, inhale. And exhale. Let's inhale, right leg high. Let's stand up, split here. And this time, exhale, right foot forward and through in between the hands. Let's inhale, arms up, regular high lunge. Different from warrior one. Back leg is neutral. A nice lunge of that front leg if you can. We're going to inhale straight the right leg. Exhale, transition warrior two. Adjusting your feet as you might need. Full breath in. And full breath out. Inhale. Maybe you lunge a little deeper. Exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. Let's inhale straight in the front leg. For the next inhale, pivot right foot to match left foot. So make sure your feet are even, outer feet are very parallel with each other. So let's release the fingers behind the back. Let's again go with right thumb on top. So very similar to the humble warrior. Take your breath in. This is known as fan pose as you bow forward. Or cross read of Patanasana. It's the same kind of feeling in the shoulders, letting the crown of the head surrender. Take another breath in. Then exhale, release the hands to the floor. Let's all inhale to a flat back. And then exhale. And we're going to bend the right knee and come into Skandasana. So it's like a side one, if you will. Now I've seen this done different ways. Some people keep the right heel on the floor. Me personally, kind of have to lift it if I want to get a better stretch. If you're really open in your Achilles tendons, you know, the heel kind of part, part through the back of the foot, your right heel might stay down. But try to get your pelvis low. We're feeling a stretch in that left inner thigh, full breath in. 
Mindful breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Two more cycles of breath. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale. And exhale. Then we're going to inhale, make your way back to center, right? just kind of a regular straddle there. Let everything hang. And then if any of you like to practice inversions here, feel free. If you know what that is, you know, going into tripod or even sursasana one, different arm placement. If you're new to inverting, I often like to offer imagining yourself going upside down. So you might just start with certain uh, preparations for the arms. Hands line up with the feet. You're making literally a tripod if you're doing tripod or even just practicing the setup. It is a tripod with both hands and the crown of your head, right? So it's like a, a bit of a triangle as you bring the crown of your head down. Now this could be it. When you're tired, you come out of it. You don't have to lift the legs. You might lift just the heels, right? And picture your sitting bones lifting up and imagine your legs going upside down with what they go. If that's too much and you're not interested in that, just hang out in regular prostorita. Just straddle forward fold. Two more breaths, inhale. Exhale. Inhaling and exhaling. So we'll inhale, pivot both feet forward, pull back the front of the mat here, and then we'll just bring that right foot back down dog. Now use your inhale to make your way out plank pose, and then exhale side. Plank. Some of you might like to drop the right knee to the floor. Send left heel down, lift left arm up. If you'd rather stack the legs a little harder, you can go ahead and Vajdi Stasana, use your core. So this is an arm balance, but you're also using your abdominals. We'll inhale, left hand down. Exhale, knees wide. Child's pose. So super duper long arms, breathe in. Exhale, walk both arms. Way over to the left. Full breath in. So you're stretching out your right side body. Full breath out. Inhaling. Exhale. Breathing in. And breathing out. Now arms back to center. If you need to stay here longer in regular child pose, that's fine. Otherwise, send your hips up, down the facing dog. And you just stay here for prep for even nasa. Inhaling plank pose. Now again, engage your navel the spine. Be aware of your core. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, four, chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra, roll the shoulders back. Exhale. Do all fours, down. Take a moment, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, left leg high. And again, we're gonna exhale left foot forward and through. And notice all 10 toes face forward. Pay special attention to your back foot. We are not externally rotating as in a warrior one. Very neutral rotation. Both kneecaps face forward. Inhale, arms up, high lunge. Keeping your nice oval point. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, transition. Range your feet if necessary. Warrior two. Full breath in. And notice if you're doing a little bit of this, right? Think of your rib cage. Stack on top of the hips. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. Inhale, straighten your left leg. Parallel your feet. Interlace fingers behind back, left to bottom top. So inhale, bring those knuckles down, right? You are trying to spread in the collarbones. 
And then just exhale, bow forward, cross the Rita, Hanasanasana here. So even though, yes, we are laying the crown of the head to render to gravity, try to let your shoulders resist gravity. The shoulders are lifting up and away from the floor. Take another breath in. And so release the hands down. Let's inhale to a nice flat back. Really do bring your sternum forward. Exhale, we hold. Skandasana, other side. So we're going to bend the left knee. And again, some of you might be able to keep that left heel on the floor. But again, if you need to lift the heel, go ahead. Some teachers might insist otherwise. Like, I feel like I have to readjust my right leg. And it could just be my body. Like, I could bring my left heel to the floor. Um, but I feel like I, I'm not able to support myself as much. So it might just be me. You can even try both ways, see how that feels. I think it's more of a stretch for your inner right thigh, so it doesn't matter if your left heel is lifted or not. Let's take one more breath in. Stay for the breath out. Inhale, lift back up. We're gonna adjust your feet if you have to there. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, rebuild. Now let's inhale, pivot both feet. 90 degrees to the left, you're technically passing through this pyramid. Extend the left knee, palms flat, find your way back. Adam will gush on center. Full breath in, full breath out. And help plank pose. Start becoming very, very aware of your core, your abdominals. Exhale, you can either stack the legs or drop the left knee. It's a little easier. Right heel down, right arm up. Um, Vashti Stasana, variation. Keep engaging your core. Take another breath in. Exhale, release with your right hand down. Breathe in. Exhale, child's pose. Breathe out, nice long arms, inhale. Let's exhale both arms way, way over to the right. So stretch in the left side body. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale, the arms back to center. Either stay here or come back out of the Shvanasana. Taking your vinyasa, inhale, roll it out, plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga four, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, Urban Mukha Shvanasana four, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shvanasana. We'll take another breath in. Let's exhale and bring the big toes to touch. We're going to inhale right leg high, down, down, split here. And then exhale your shin bone forward for a pigeon press. Keep the left knee back. Inhale to the chest. Now, if you know, you do not take pigeon pose. You may take angle to knee pose on your backs. Exhale as you bow forward. Now, we'll be here for a while. So really try to settle into the pose. If your neck is uncomfortable, you might want to use your block, your book, even a pillow to support your head. Close your eyes and find some silence listening to your breath.
couple more breaths here. Shift into the outer right hip. So let's just maneuver left leg it's all the way around. So we're going to bring the sole of that left foot to the floor. And then many of you might be able to keep the sole of the left foot on the floor and loop the left sitting bone. Now, for many of us, it's, it's a challenge. You might be a little tight in the outer left hip, in which case, you might find straightening the right leg right helps, right? Just kind of helps you settle the left sitting bone down as well. Either way, you want to sit super tall. So again, come back to what I mentioned in the very beginning of class um, about rooting your sitting bones down like the roots of a plant, right? So those are really firmly grounded. However, the midsection, the ribs, and I was lifting up, reaching up through the crown of the head. Left hand can come behind you sometimes that helps to remind you to sit tall. Inhale, right arm up. And we're going to exhale, twisting left arm, Matsya Andrasana. Inhale, lengthen and grow, which you're using the breath to assist you. Exhale, two twist. Inhale, lengthen and grow. Maybe you look over your left shoulder a little more. Exhale to twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale to twist. Just one more breathing in, breathing out. Now let's inhale through center. Exhale, take a counter twist to your right. So then we'll face forward. And let's just take a bit of an ankle to knee variation. So we're really going to flex the left foot, stamp the right foot in front of your right sitting bone, right? Literally. So it's back to right heel, lining up with right sitting bone. Flip your fingertips back, and then just gently encourage your chest towards your left. Yeah. Variation on ankle to knee. Now it's important that you flex your left foot. Keep breathing. Back to that even pace breath. Little Ujjayi. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. And then we're going to rearrange the legs into Gomukhasana. It's different. It's more of a knee to knee alignment. It, you know, in a perfect world, I mean, my legs don't do this, but in a perfect world, the knees are stacked, both patellas, both kneecaps stacked, facing forward. So you're going for that midline. That's when I saw a beautiful picture where it's like the kneecaps were lined up with the shishu nadabi, right? That midline in the middle of the back. Do your best just to get the knees where they can go. And then it is called Gomukhasana or cow face pose. I think it's because we're making the feet look like cow's ears. And that's, that's how I perceive it. I, I could be wrong. But I think what's happening is once you look at your feet, like, oh, okay. Maybe it's, it's making a little shape of, of a cow face. So again, try to keep rooting your left sitting bone down. Just take a moment here. It's going to be intense all on its own. Full breath in, full breath out, inhale, exhale, one more breath in, stay for your breath out. So we're going to inhale, left arm out to the side, a little different. So come back to the forearm, come into the middle. So again, some people just need to modify. This is where they are. You might attempt to do full Gomukhasana arms, in which case you really start to wiggle that left back of the hand up the back, lifting the right arm up, 
you might be able to get the fingers. Now, again, this does not work for everyone. Some people just, you know, let the hands land where they will. Maybe you grab the back of the shirt. Straps, if you have one, or belts can be nice, but I honestly like to practice both ways. Yes, a strap can be helpful, but I also sometimes like just to practice wiggling that left finger up, even if I can't quite get the uh, fingers. Also, if you're left, um, handed, you might be tighter on the side. If you're right handed, however, you might be a little less tight in this left shoulder. And you'll notice the difference on the other side. We'll rip in. Some of you might hinge forward, but that's very optional. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. Inhale, tall. And then exhale, release the right arm, release the left arm. Maybe shimmy your shoulders out a little bit. And then we're just going to bring the legs forward. You can even kind of shake them out a little bit if you'd like. And we'll just bring the soles of the feet to touch. Vajrakonasana. Inhale, lengthen in your back. Nice, long back. And exhale, hinge forward. Over right in through the nose. Exhale through your nose. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath in. Stay for that breath out. We'll inhale, lift up to sit. You can cross one ankle over the other, Sukhasana, roll over. Just find your way back. Downward facing dog. However, you need to get there. The spine needs to get there a different way. Pressing your belly towards your thighs, bend the knees if necessary. Take another breath in. Exhale, bring your big toes to touch. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, shin forward, pigeon prep. So again, you already know if you're an ankle to knee on the back person, go ahead and shift there. Otherwise, really scoot your right knee back. Inhale up to the heart. Super even hips. Exhale back forward. Again, using a little lift of the pillow or block if you need. And again, we're going to be here for a little while. So if you feel like you need to deepen your stretch at any point, either widen the angle of your front leg and or scoot your right knee back more. Just make it a more intense stretch. Keep breathing. More deep breathing cycles. Begin to shift into that outer left hip. And again, it's really so we can kind of shift that right leg all the way around. So notice on this side, again, if you really want the sole of the right foot to come to the floor, and then see if you can also ground the right to knee bone. Again, if that's not working for you, I want you to mind this a little, but if you really feel like, wow, it's popping up like this, you're better off straightening that bottom leg, that left leg. So, right to knee bone down. That right hand can go behind the uh, sacrum, just to sit nice and tall. And with that lovely length we want, 
Inhale, left arm up. And exhale, take your twist. Ardha Matsi and Drasana, full breath into length and grow. Full breath out to twist. Inhale, lengthen and grow. It's okay with your neck. Look over your right shoulder, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. Full inhale, let's come back through center. Exhale, take a counter twist. To the left. And then again, make sure you flex your right foot. I stress this because in certain types of hip openers, much safer for your knee. I forget what they call it. It's not the happy trio. It's some kind of trio, your ankle, your knee, your hip. They all affect each other. A lot of times if you hurt your hip, you start to feel it in your knee, maybe your ankle. If you hurt your ankle, sometimes it transcends up to your hip. Point being, flex your right foot to protect your knee. We're really opening the hip here. You can point your fingertips back and then just encourage your chest closer to that right calf. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath in. Stay for that breath in. And then we'll release. Well, really, we're going to shift the left foot over to the right as we release left knee down. Now, think of again your left kneecap. It's also a nice way to say this. Your left kneecap is directly facing forward. So, ideally, I'm not saying everyone's body will cooperate, but ideally, it's not like your knee is pointing off to the corner. Your left kneecap is facing forward. So to try and mimic, again, your midline vertical axis as you stack the right knee on top of that makes sense. You're doing your best to stack outer right knee on top of inner left knee. Again, do your best. Might not be exactly positioned, but you're moving in that direction. Sit as tall as you can. Now also, you can wiggle your left foot forward a little more. So when you look down, again, it's like little cow's ears. Keep moving your right sitting bone down. Now, this is another pose. I apologize if I didn't mention it. Kind of like the C spinal twist. You can straighten your bottom leg. You can take Arda, which means half, from the class end. Not as intensive as hip stretch for many people, but again, if this is what you need for your body, it can still be a nice hip opener, perhaps in your uh, right hip. If you stack both, go for it. Remember, we're moving down through those sitting bones, like two even roots of a plane, like these two shoots, the sitting bones, it's really moving down energy. Reach up to the crown of the head for now. And we're going to take Omukasana arms, other side. Now, again, if it's too much, it's fine if you want to breathe here longer. Tune into the sensation you're already feeling. If you want to add the arms, this time it's going to be right forearm to the middle back, just to start. Now, wedge your right hand up. I sometimes like to, you know, use the help of my left hand just to kind of get it positioned. So I'm right handed, like many of us. I'm significantly tighter in my right shoulder, something to work on. So inhaling left arm up. Bend the left elbow again. You may or may not get the fingers, but you should feel a stretch. If you prefer a belt, go for it. And then feel free to sit tall or turn this into a forward bend. Inhale, lifting back up to sit. And exhale, releasing your left arm, followed by your right arm. And take your time getting out of this. 
And just bring your feet forward. You might feel like you need to shake out your legs a little bit. And this time we'll take a forward bend that's a straddle. So some of you might prefer to be uh, this way on the mat. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. And then try to have your uh, kneecaps facing up. So again, moving your sitting bones down. So when you think of your sitting bones, again, they're moving down like the other poses. Some people, they might be poking the sitting bones back and the kneecaps start to roll forward. Ideally, we're looking for sitting bones down, which will pelvis. Thighs are somewhat externally rotated. Now, again, easier said than done for a lot of people. That's just the energy, you know, that's the direction I should say you're going in. So it's not that things have to be aesthetically perfect, but even by you attempting to move in that direction, you're doing your body good, right? That's the practice. Take a nice breath in. Exhale, maybe you hinge forward a little, maybe not at all. You might go a little more, full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. Exhale. So many of you may have heard this term, finding your edge. So we never want to go to the point of harm or pushing it too far, but we might be pushing it enough where we feel a significant challenge, most likely discomfort but not pain. Okay. You want to breathe in that place of discomfort. Three more mindful breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, close your legs here. One more little forward bend. Let's inhale both arms up. If you need to bend your knees, perfectly fine. Exhale, and jump and over. Posture you to nice and You grab the feet. With the hands on the shins or floor, and that's fine. Encourage your sternum towards your feet. Force those nice, deep, intentional breaths. We'll point the feet, lifting up to sit. Now, if you don't have props, you can still do a traditional fish pose. Just a different sensation, it's not supported. If you have blocks or even a blanket, so for example, you can either roll up if a blanket is what you are working with or prefer to work with. Also guys, if you have bolsters, if you're one of those people lucky enough to have a bolster at home, of course that works while pillows work. The idea would be to place the bottom of the bolster or blanket, the roll that blanket, the bottom of the spine, and you would drape over this. So this is a variation on supported uh, fish. However, what I'm going for today is a bit more of a stretch in the chest and an active back bend in some ways. So it's going to be restorative in that we're resting on blocks, but a little bit more active in the stretch of the front ribs. So people will position the blocks differently. If you prefer long ways, that's fine. If you want it to be in the thoracic area, kind of, you know, more between the shoulder blades, you can bring the soles of the feet to touch, Supta Some people don't mind the head drooping. If that's not working for your neck, Take again, pillow, block, something of support under your head. Once you're there and set up, let the elbows just rest on the floor. Now, if you don't have blocks and you're feeling a whole bunch of, you know, rajas today, you can take fish pose where you're pressing your forearms into the floor and you're not using the blocks at all. Maybe your legs are straight, then you rest when you need to rest. Otherwise, relax on the blocks.
again, although I love a vinyasa style practice, yin yoga and, and other forms of yoga, restorative, just people don't even have a label, classical yoga. You know, there's something to be said about picking maybe a pose or two in the morning or in the evening where you really linger in it for quite some time, right? So in most vinyasa classes, unless they're fairly long, we don't get to spend 10 minutes in say a fish pose or a pigeon pose or you know something like that. But if you want to focus on something, say for example, if you're someone who is tight in the front of your chest, you might be someone who has a habit of slouching, a lot of us do. This is an excellent pose to counter that because you're allowing your chest to open your collarbones to spread, and over time, you might be able to start training yourself not to slouch as much. But I will say this, when people start to get really tight in the chest muscles, it's hard not to slouch because now your pectorals have actually become tight. So if your chest muscles are tight, it's not going to be your second nature to sit with a nice broad open chest if, it, if it's uncomfortable. So you want to be able to find ways to stretch. Now, this is just an example of this pose. You're tightening the hips, you know, you get the idea. Find a pose that you can really breathe in, perhaps for 10 minutes or so a day. A few more deep breaths. Now, if you're feeling quite comfortable, you don't want to move, perhaps you chose a bolster or a blanket and you feel very comfortable, you can extend your legs and it becomes a bit more of a supported shavasana. It's a little bit more heart opening, but if you just need to let this go, remove your blocks. You might take the blocks or blanket underneath your thighs instead, right, just to give yourself a bit of relief in your lower back. Right, so this is an example. Just a little lift in your legs. Come into your corpse pose, palms facing up, closing your eyes. Releasing all of that physical work. Welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. Otherwise, begin breathing deeper, inviting movement into different parts of the body. You can hug each knee towards your chest. Rolling on to one side. Gently lifting your way back up to sit. Finding that connection with your sitting bones and the earth. Neutral pelvis tailbone lengthening down as you reach up through the crown of your head. Hands to the heart center. Thanking yourself for making the effort and the time to be here this morning. Namaste.